Hi there, I'm Kevin Bialis. I work for the Bureau of Freshwater and Biological Monitoring in the Rivers and Streams Chemistry section. We're here today at the Manasquan River in Monmouth County, and we're gonna collect a sample here for lab analysis and for some on-site field measurements. This is the uh, typical equipment that we usually bring to take a stream sample. We uh, bring a tagline so we can divide the stream into a cross section. We divide the stream into a cross section so we can take certain readings at certain points into the stream. Uh, we have a meter here that will ha that is attached to a DO probe for dissolved oxygen that we take a measurement of on site. And we also have a churn here that we use a sample bottle to collect uh, water samples from certain points along the stream, along the cross section. We uh, will fill this up and then take it back to the vehicle for then later processing and to divide it up into bottles to be sent to the lab and to conduct other uh, field measurements. The first step when we get to the site is we lay out a tagline across the stream. Uh, the reason why we use a tagline is so that we can divide the stream into even sections in which we collect water and take field measurements. The next step after laying out the tagline was um, doing my pre-rinse of the equipment that I use to sample and collect the water. Uh, the reason why we pre-rinse is we want to make sure that there's no contaminants in the churn and bottle that we're using and make sure that we're getting the best sample possible. So after we do the pre-rinse, which we rinse out everything three times as a set protocol, uh, the analogy I always use is it's like rinsing a milk bottle. The, uh, you rinse it once, it's still a little murky, but you rinse it twice, a little less murky, then that third time, it's gonna be pretty clear. After doing the pre-rinse, I take my field measurements with my dissolved oxygen probe, and I take five measurements across the stream. Uh, I wanna make sure that I divide the stream evenly and to take it at different parts, uh, and not just take a center flow measurement, because we wanna make sure that we're getting a, a complete snapshot of the stream. Oftentimes, a tributary can be coming in and and affecting the dissolved oxygen measurements. So that's why we take five across the stream. After taking the dissolved oxygen measurements, we collected the actual sample. We use a churn. It's also called a agitator in the water sampling world. The reason why we use the agitator or the churn to collect the sample is so that we can create a composite sample of the entire stream. So again, we're taking a full snapshot of the stream, not just a center flow grab. So that way we're getting any influences that we're seeing on the left bank or the right bank or in the center. Uh, I take 10 uh, samples across the stream, evenly divide it, and to try to get a true representation of the stream, taking more water from areas where there's heavier flow. And also when I'm taking the sample with the bottle, I'm making sure to get a full profile of the entire water column. So starting from the bottom and working my way up as it fills. After I collect that sample, I still have to take a Additional samples with the little brown bottles here. Um, the little brown bottles are used in other analysis such as um, dissolved organic carbon, DOC, and other types of measurements. After we take the measurement, uh, I usually try to do a visual analysis of the stream, try to see, rate it based on what the turbidity is, whether I see any trash, litter, or any other anthropogenic influences that are occurring at the site. I noticed when we got here that there was a construction site further upstream so I'll note that in the site notes and see if there's any influences coming in from that also and with that just taking in the view and enjoying the time being outside also